this. There are three types of options. There's add the money, add the money, out of the money, and in the money. In the money. So add the money basically means that if Nifty is at 15, uh, 14,900 or nearby, then 15, uh, 14,900 CE and 14,900 PE are add the money options. So if Nifty is currently at 14,900, so the options which are for the same strikes are at are called add the money options. Why? Because they are essentially positioned on where Nifty currently is at. Out of the money, if Nifty is at 14,900, then anything above 14,900, which is 14,950 plus for calls and 14,000 over 14,900 calls and less than 14,900 puts. These are called out of the money options. So, if Nifty is currently at 14,900. Yeah, this is where Nifty is, right? So any position above this, any call options above this, any calls above this, and any puts below this particular price for the strikes. All these strikes are out of the money. So this is at the money. 14,900 call option, 14,900 puts, they are at the money. Any calls which are above 14,900, right, which is 15,000 and above, they are all out of the money options. And for puts, anything below 14,900 is out of the money puts. So essentially, what does it mean? When you're buying 14,900 put, you're trying to protect yourself for any move which happens below 14,900. That's what you're trying to do, right? And for call options, essentially you want to, you can speculate, but if you're shorting the market, you if market goes against you, you want to protect yourself for any move beyond a particular price. So these are out of the money options. Now third is in the money options. If Nifty is at 14,900, then anything below 14,900. So let's just say less than 14,900 C and 14,000 PE. They are in the money options. Okay, so if Nifty currently is here, and if I'm buying a put option, which is 15,000 CE, I'm buying this particular put option. So this particular put option already has some value inbuilt into it. What is that particular value? It's 50 points or some 70 points in this case. So if for in the money, if Nifty is currently at 14,900 and if I buy 15,000 PE, what does this mean? This means that my, my this particular 15,000 PE is 100 points in the money. Does that make any sense? And similarly, if Nifty is currently at 15,000, uh, 14,900, and I buy 14,800 uh, CE, then 14,800 CE is 100. 100 points in the money. So this is add the money, out of the money, in the money. Particular term, add the money essentially means all the contract options for the price the Nifty is currently at. Out of the money, 
for calls it anything above nifty current price or any underlying for that matter i'm just using nifty as an example and for puts anything below this particular price is out of the money for puts and for in the money is just the opposite so let's just see uh, how this attack please uh, i get the atm options but uh, why would someone buy an itm or, and not buy an otm call what's the difference between the two how do you use them this strategies yeah so i'll i'll actually explain it to you by the amount of premium those have okay so option prices have two values right it has has to any option has two values intrinsic and extrinsic now for this case uh let's say nifty is at 14900 and i'm buying a 15000 and i'm buying a 15000 call right so it is an out of the money call so in this case let's see what the price of 15000 call is it's rupees 170 okay and this for 11th feb how do you call at 117.8 so where exactly is it it is currently nifty is at 14,924 1494 yeah so in this case since it's actually out of the money it's not in the money yet its extrinsic value value is zero this contract currently don't doesn't have any value of its own right it only has the time value so extrinsic value can be also called as time value roughly it has it it is made of other things but it's roughly called time value it's the potential value essentially of this contract expiring in the money so in this case this particular contract has intrinsic value of and extrinsic value is the complete amount okay and let's take other example this is for out of the money let's take an example for at the money nifty is at 14924 and 14900 ce which is at the money so 14900 ce has the value of 171 So in this case, intrinsic value is twenty-four points because it's twenty-four points in the money, and the extrinsic value is one seventy-one minus twenty-four, one forty-seven. That's the extrinsic value of this option. and now let's go to in the money options so 14800 is a good example so 34 so in this case the intrinsic value is 124 Because it's one twenty-four points in the money, one four ninety-four minus one four eight zero zero. The value already holds, and now any other value, so two thirty-four minus one twenty-four, hundred and ten, and hundred and ten points is the extrinsic value. Now think about this. This particular contract, if you are buying fourteen thousand eight, this already covers for one twenty-four points, which is already in the money right so 124 points are already covered so what's the remaining amount that's the premium you are paying that is the premium you are paying for for particular for taking this position so think about this look at the difference for out of the money for at the money and for in the money you are actually paying a lot more premium for in the money option at the money options and for so for this particular thing to have any value nifty will have to at expiry 
for you to make a profit okay let's also add another thing add break even at expiry so this is a 15000 ce right so you want essentially nifty to move 15000 plus this much for this contract to for you to make a profit on this so you want nifty to be at 15117.8 this is where you want nifty at expiry this is your break even now for add the money option let's look at where it is it's a 14900 ce so break even at expiry for this particular option would be 14900 plus 147 147 15047 sorry the yeah. and in this case my break-even would be 14800 mm, yeah so 14800plus34 since that much is already priced in. So one four eight zero plus two thirty four. Fifteen thousand thirty four. Thank you. <laughs> so now look at the difference in the break evens. For out of the money option, your break even is wider. I need a bigger move in this contract to be able to make money at expiry. For at the money, the break even is wide, but it's it's less wide than the particular out of the money option. So my probability of actually making money with at the money is higher out of the money because I'm paying more premium for this and I need an even bigger move for me to be able to make money on this. For at the money, I am paying a lesser, I'm, I'm paying a decent enough premium, but then again, I have a position which is right there. It's actually in the money technically. And for in the money, I'm paying the least amount of premium. Now, as you go more and more in the money, as you go more and more away from the price, Actually, if you go to 14,700, this has a 200 points premium and some 100 rupees, some 80 rupees as the actual price, 80 rupees as the actual premium. And as you more, more, move more and more out of the money, the premium goes down as well. Like 15,100 as only 70. So this particular premium is what you're paying to take this position. Think about this. When you're buying a in the money call, it is already covering for 124 points. So you are paying this extra. This is the price you are paying, right? So in the money, if you are taking positions, if you are speculating, and if you really think the price is going to move in your, you can take in the money because that has the least amount of break even. So that answers your question. Why would somebody buy in the money? It has the least amount of premium to take a particular position. The premium being the extrinsic value. Don't take the entire price because it's actually the most expensive one. But as you go more and more in the money, the amount of premium you're paying decreases. So at expiry, your break even is better. With... Oh, does that answer your question? Dude? Yes, it did. It was, it was a very long explanation, but I thought it'd be better yeah, it to was, break it down. It was very good. Thank you. Yeah, I hope it makes sense, man. This is yeah. some mathematic shit. Okay. Yeah. It's a lot Irtak, of things. Uh, do people yeah. sell in the money options because they are making uh, profit? So yes, they do. yes, they do. Yes, they do. So I'll actually come to that. I mean, I, I'll only be comfortable selling in. So now let's just see whatever we learned here. All this break even, what premium we are paying and all this stuff. Let's look at it from the perspective of the payoff diagrams. Now we are actually coming to the strategies themselves. When you're buying a put, when you're buying a call, how do these things work, right? So let's start with add the money call because that's the most basic example I can give you. So if you want to go long on the market, what do you do? You buy a call. I mean, it's not the ideal way, but it's a, it's a good starter, right? If you don't know anything else. So most people would know this is, this is the easiest way to go long on anything. They'll just buy Nifty call. So this particular thing is the payoff diagram. How to read this particular diagram, right? Uh, 
Let me take a screenshot and put this in the top. So what does this tell us? This tell us that the current price, wherever this particular line is, this particular line says is the current price. Uh, is the current price where Nifty is at? This is the price line. If Nifty moves this much higher and up down, and this is your projected profit. So if Nifty goes all the way here, this is your red line. Red line essentially tells you where your price PNL would be at expiry. So if Nifty is currently here. For you to make a profit on this, Nifty needs to move in the upward direction, which is what your bet is, right? Nifty needs to go above 15,000 and higher beyond. That's what your bet is. So PNL diagram, as you move ahead when buying a call, your profit will go up, right? This is what the PNL diagram says. Now, uh, on the converse, uh, I'll just give you an example of buying the. In this case, as Nifty goes down, your profits increase. Now we are coming to the actual trading part. This was all theoretical stuff. Even if you don't understand this, on be fine for in most cases. But it's good to have a background. Now this is the actual stuff we are getting into trades. If you buy a put, you want the price to go down for your profits to go up. Now you would be seeing two lines here. There's a red line. There's a blue line. What does these? What what do these tell? So. Uh, let me go to the monthly contract, not the, not this particular contract. This is a weird contract. So let's take a bullish position. Let's buy a call for the Feb month end expiry. So what does this particular call tell us? There's a red line which says where your PNL would be at expiry, like on 25th Feb itself. And then there's the blue line which tells you where your PNL would be on the day you buy it. At so 8th Feb is the next open day. So it's calculating for 8th February. Now you have to note that the position and loss for options won't be the same for expiry and for the present day itself. But as you move, as you move the present day more and more, as you move closer to expiry, this blue line will contract and eventually merge. With so as time passes by, your current present PNL will move with time. So in this case, now let's look at, uh, dude, anyone has any questions with this? Time? Please ask me because this is going to be very important. Beyond this point. Anyone who has any questions, any doubts? Am I even audible? Mm, yeah, not yeah, the you're audible. Uh, any questions, man? Everybody gets it? Yes. Before expiry, you get money. At expiry, it is zero. Yes. <laughs> so, so let's start with option strategies. Now that we know how to look at this paper. So let me just write down two lines. X axis is your price of underline in this example Nifty. Y axis is your profits, profits or loss. Uh, in this case, it's a rupee terms. It's redundant. The blue line is the P and L at present date or the selected date and the red line is the PNL at expiry of contract. So let's start with buying calls. So if you're bullish on the market, most people, the first thing they know is you are a buy calls to bet on the upside of the market. Now look at this, the blue line and the red line. So the blue line says that as Nifty starts moving in your direction, you are making profit. Okay. But you have to also understand that let's go back to this particular calculation that we did here. So we are buying add the money option in this case, this particular thing, right? 
So you are paying 147 rupees as premium in this case. Uh, let's go back to Feb 11th because that's what we based our calculations of. So you're paying 147 points as the premium for this. So your break even would be you at expiry, you want Nifty to move at least for you to be able to return a profit out of this, which means you want Nifty to go at 15,047 or beyond to make money at expiry. Now do, do note that expiry prices and the price on the day can be different, the PNLs. Right, that's where the red and blue line separation comes. So when you are just buying calls, what do you want? You want Nifty to at least so that's your risk, the amount of money you're putting in. Ah, money making making random jokes. So the amount of if you're buying just a call, what's what's the maximum money you can lose? It's the amount of money you're putting in, which is 171 into 12 uh, into 75. So that's 12k. 13k now what do you want you want nifty to move at least 71 points in this case i think i miscalculated either way you want nifty to move at least to 15,071 and above to be able to make a profit at expiry so 15071 that's your break even point as nifty moves you might make some profits within the same day but at expiry you want it to at least be here Otherwise, you're not going to make any profits. So now look at where the break evens, how the break evens differ for in the money, at the money, and out of the money calls. One quick question. Please go for it. Uh, the Greeks, do they change accordingly? Uh, I mean, do we uh, buy or sell based on Greeks or? Um... The numbers at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, yes, you actually they do make a lot of difference. Uh, they do dis determine a lot of strategies, like which strategy to use and when. And Greeks do make a do play a very big role, and they will change as the market moves. You know, they are not constants. They so, will change. Uh, so it's like okay, if gamma, uh, sorry, if theta is this much, gamma is this much, we buy, and if theta are this much we sell is there like a band or something like that to be follow or no it is something yeah, i mean i mean there's there's not an obvious formula because if there was one then would have capitalized on that right but right. you can essentially there are certain moments when mm -hmm. like uh you can it can help you take higher probability trades that when the vega mm -hmm. when the vega is high when the implied volume when the market is expecting a bigger move right then yeah. you essentially most of that price is priced in into options. So if you're buying options, the market is already pricing in a two or three percent move for that, for example. So if you're buying those options, your chances of making profit are not a lot higher. So if you're buying options before budget, your mm -hmm. probabilities were lesser of making money because the market was already expecting a bigger move. And you needed a very big move to be able to break even because there's more premium you're paying. And these things will come. So we'll actually get to that. I mean, okay. I actually have a section at the very end, effects of Greeks on various option strategies. So I think we are somewhere here. Basic strategies, sure. payoff diagram, we, are, we have covered this. Basic strategies, naked options and spreads, then intermediate strategies, and then effect of Greeks on various option strategies. How the Greeks affect, which strategy you choose, and how they affect while you're in the strategy. I'm not sure we might have to take this tomorrow if we don't cover it in the next 45 minutes, which I doubt we would. Let's see. Let's go with it. Uh, Raijan asks, are gammas more to understand why the option may be valued at that price if you're not the right? I don't get, uh, I don't get your question, man. You might have to put that in some other words. Are gamma more to understand? No, gammas are not. Gamma essentially says that how quickly the price, how quickly the delta will change. It's a double derivative if you go in mathematical terms. Uh, dude, we'll get to that. You're jumping into a question which is significantly ahead. So either way, so let's start with naked calls and naked puts. If you're buying the call, you want Nifty to move at least the amount of premium you're paying, which is 171 points. 
beyond the particular price. So you want Nifty to be at 1571 at expiry for you to be able to make profit. As time passes by, this particular, oh uh, shit. As time passes by, you will notice the blue line will collapse and get closer to. So as time essentially passes by, you'll need an even bigger and bigger to make a profit when buying calls. Okay. Now what's your risk? Your risk is the amount of money you're paying to buy this option. So 171 into 75. That's your risk. If Nifty does not go above. So that's the amount of money you're going to lose. If So you're buying 14,900 costs, which means you want Nifty to be above 40,900. And that's when you, and when Nifty starts moving above 14,900 is when you're going to start making profits in this particular call. So if Nifty does not move above 14,900, then the entire option price goes to essentially zero, which means all the money that you have put in will go to zero below this particular line. So 14,900, this is 14,900. Below that, you're going to lose all your money that you paid for this option. But that's your maximum loss in this case. So this is the most basic option position you can take. You can take, you can buy an option. Your risk is the amount of money you're putting in. Your profits are essentially unlimited. Nifty can go to 80,000 <laughs> and you will be sitting on 4 millions, <laughs> but that's not going to happen, obviously. So your profit is technically unlimited. It can just, Nifty can keep going up and up and you'll keep making money out of it. So if Nifty goes to 15,500, you're going to make good. Uh, the other position you can take is to buy puts. If you're bearish on the market, the most simple position says buy a put. Now, in this case, the amount of premium you're paying is 137. Rupees. And you are some 20 points closer to the. So essentially, you want Nifty to go to 14,762, which is 1900 minus 137. You want Nifty to move beyond this particular point and beyond that for you to be able to make money at expiry. Does that make sense? So far, so good. Hey, Dao is here. What's up? So let's move ahead. So when you're buying a put, you want Nifty to move beyond the price of the premium you're paying from the strike. This is for expiry. And as time passes by, this particular blue line collapses and gets closer to the red. So as time passes by, you'll need an even bigger and bigger. This is buying put. So first you bought calls, you bought posts. So that's one way to go bullish or bearish on the market. Another way to go bullish or bearish on the market is to sell the other option. And this is what I like. So if I'm bullish on the market, instead of buying a call, I'm more than happy to sell a put. I mean, for any option contract to exist, somebody has to buy and sell, right? So if you're buying a call, you're bullish. And whoever sold you that call is bearish. Similarly, and, um, if you're buying a... I had a question. Like, how, how do you exercise a nifty contract, by the way? Uh, did you just join? No, no, no. I'm asking. So I think so, we so, covered this, right? Under cash settled? No, no, no. I'm asking you, uh, once you exercise a nifty option, right? But whatever, yeah. call or put. Yeah. So what do I get exactly? You like get not money, from... you get cash. So it... So shares Neoske basically nothing. We we this is settled in cash. I think we covered this, right? Were you around when I discussed this part? Uh, okay. So Most it's cash settled, part. right? NSE okay. so we I gave this example. Nifty is fifteen thousand CE February. This is essentially a position on seventy five units of Nifty. So if Nifty is expiring at fifteen thousand five hundred, which means your this particular contract is five hundred points in the money. Okay, right? okay, got it, got it. Yeah. So 37,500 is the, is the amount of, is what the price of this option should be at expiry. Okay. And NSE will settle the difference directly into your accounts if you're holding this contract at, at expiry. So it's cash settled. So it can't basically go to zero like, uh, for example, if I'm holding a shares uh, options, right? Yeah. So if it goes to expiry, does it get mm -hmm. exercised automatically or... 
I am board. actually not sure about this, but I think it does. Newer rule says that it does get. Uh, you have to exercise mandatory or contract expiry. So stock okay. options get exercised. Um, okay, I, I... Kiki Killer here. So for the stock options, yes, it would be getting expiry, and you have to make physical delivery in yeah. case if you have sold the option, and you will get the delivery in if you bought a call option. But in case of the index options, it will be cash settled, so you don't yeah. have to worry about index options at all. All right. Yeah. And also, since this is a European option, so everything happened at oh, expiry. Yeah. yeah, I did not cover that particular part. I just mentioned European. Hmm. Yeah, so European, European contract is that uh, all the settlement happens at the expiry, whereas mm -hmm. in the American option, you can exercise anytime. Okay, okay. Okay, what do you attack? Yeah. Uh, yeah, awesome, man. Thanks. Thanks for pitching in. So... Now, for particularly, we were discussing that if you want to take a bullish position, how do you take that? First is you buy a call. At very simple, you are paying some amount of premium. That's your maximum risk. And for whatever premium you are paying, market has to move that and beyond for you to be able to make money at expiry. Before that, you might be better off. But over time, time is working against you no matter what. And because this, this particular blue line will come red line. So far, so good. Let's move ahead. Uh, second is selling a put. If I want to be long on the, if I if I feel Nifty is going to stay above this particular price, I can just sell this put option. So here in this case, my maximum, since I'm collecting a premium, I'll just sell this particular put option for 137. And this is the money that goes to my account, 10K initially, as soon as I sell this particular stock uh sell this particular option this money gets credited to my account and now essentially i have to preserve this amount that's what i have to do to make a profit so this is the maximum profit i can make if nifty goes above it goes all the way in the case of call option no matter how high the nifty goes i will my profits will keep going up but in case of put no matter how high nifty goes my my profits are capped I am not going to make any more money than what I have collected initially, which is 137 into 75. Now 75 is the lot size in case anybody is not sure. Yeah. But in this case, it's essentially the other position of the buyer. So your losses are unlimited. If Nifty keeps tanking and keeps tanking, if a March scene was, is expected to happen all over again. If this particular thing happens, you will just keep losing and losing money. Your losses are essentially unlimited. So if Nifty just collapses to 7,600, let's see where your profits would be. So if Nifty collapses to 7,000 something, not even that, but it would be 5 lakh. Well, you're collecting 1 lakh. But obviously, that's not going to happen. It's a very rare probability. But it's basically uh, when you're selling an option, your maximum profits are limited capped to whatever premium you created. And as Nifty keeps moving down and down, since you have the obligation, you have, you have to fill somebody else's obligation, whoever you sold it to, your losses are essentially unlimited. It can keep going down and you have to keep covering for that. So, so this is how to exit the, this trade, trade uh, if I sell a put option. Yeah. Then buy it back. So this is uh, how okay. to, yeah, let me cover this part up. There's open to, uh, there's buy to open, sell to close. And buy to sell to open, buy to close. Uh, so let me put this under the section. How to start and close Nifty uh, option trades. So, when you're going, when you're buying options, when you're going long on options, you're essentially taking one side of the trade, right? So, you will buy it to open the particular thing and you'll sell to close. Now, in this case, for you to be able to buy, someone has to sell. 
right? So whoever is going long, you are going long, so you want to buy this particular. So you are opening your trade by buying the option. You are buying to open. But for someone who is taking the opposite side of the trade, they will have to sell the option to open it. So if you are buying the call, if you are buying the call, then someone has to sell the call. Okay. So you are essentially paying the premium and someone is collecting the premium in this instant. So this is the start of a trade. So from your perspective, you're buying to start the trade from their perspective, they're selling first to start the trade. And now when, whenever you feel that you have collected your enough profit or you booked your loss, you will sell the call and you will essentially collect the premium, either profit or loss. And depending on how the price has changed, the seller, the option seller will buy the calls back from the market to close that particular contract and P or L, whatever, profit or loss. So does this make sense? Is that what your question was? Yeah, it's clear. Awesome. Sir, one question here. Does Go all of happen only at expiry or it keeps happening on a regular basis in between also uh you mean buying and selling huh, yes please yeah so as long as there are enough people uh if i want to open a contract i mean if i want to buy a call and somebody is there available to sell a call so they can do it anytime and okay. if if we are like okay we don't want to take it all the way to expiry we want to close this contract out so as long as two parties are agreeing and as long as there are enough pairs of parties buying and selling, those contracts will close. It, it doesn't have to go all the way till expiration. You can actually, so usually the sellers, they are the ones who create these, think about it, right? For someone has to buy, someone will have to sell first, right? Someone is writing those contracts. Selling an option is writing a contract. So when you're doing that, so it's when the sellers close their contract is when the contract ends. <laughs> Okay. That makes sense. Option sellers not pay premium when uh -huh. they're closing the contract. No, they are they are paying some of the premium back. They they already collected 10k. Let's say I was sold a contract, so I collected 10,000 rupees. Yeah. Right. I'm collecting this premium. So now I'll have to buy the contract back again. Let's say currently it's at 2,000. So I paid 2,000 to collect the premium. What's my profit? The profit is 8,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, over time, contract value might go up, might go down. Now, so that's the risk you're taking as a seller. Now, same thing for buyer as well. It's just taking the opposite side of the trade. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is a fairly important. It's good to have a live session and make the doc as we see these questions just come. Either way. So, uh, selling a put is essentially going long on other side. Now, what are the benefits and drawbacks of buying and selling? When you should buy, when should you sell? Now, buying a call. Now, again, if you looked at it, you need a move beyond this particular point to be able to, no matter where you are, you need some amount of move and then a further move to make a profit when buying off. Right? Because you are paying a premium. You are the one paying the premium. So you need at least market to move at least from with that much premium and then above for you to return the profit. Now, when selling options, it's essentially the other direction. It's the other side. You are covered until a certain extent. So until a certain extent, you are still going to make profit. If the market moves still for 14762, if the market moves still here, you are still going to make a profit. If the market starts moving above this, that's where your losses start. So buying buying so essentially selling options you can make money even if the market has no. when you're buying an option you want the market to move to make a profit otherwise time will move against you this blue line will come to the red and your profits are you won't make any profit if the market doesn't even move so when you're buying an option you are absolutely sure that market is going to move in your direction if it doesn't you're never going to make a profit with selling options 
you have some amount of cushion, safety cushion, which is the premium, as well as even if the market stays right here, does not move an inch, you're still going to make some profit because you've collected this premium and this premium is yours. So this is a difference between buying and selling. Similarly, for a bearish position, you can buy a put. Your profits are unlimited, but you need a sizable move to able to break even and then a further move to profits above that point. Now do note that the red line, whenever I say that you break even, I'm talking about the red line. Because blue line is almost always moving along with Nifty, even though to not the same extent. And similarly, I can sell the call. In this case, I'm selling a call. I have a bearish position. So if market goes down, my maximum profits is limited to 12K. But if it starts moving above, then my losses will start piling up. So these are the naked option positions. I think I'll just put the screenshots. Don't worry. I'll put the screenshots in this doc. Uh, any questions about the naked option option positions? You're just buying or selling. That's it. Any questions? Go for it. Why would anybody do a naked option without protecting themselves? Mm, lots of reasons. But we can come to that when we cover spreads, which is the next topic. Okay. I mean, my pro probabilities are really well with this. Why? Because market really has to move a lot against me. Start making. Okay, this is the. Okay, let's say I am long on the market and I'm selling a put. I'll give you a better example. So, I, in this case, I'm selling 14,900 put. But what I can do is I can look at the chart. I can go to the Nifty. And I'm like, this particular zone, zone looks important. This particular zone, I don't think market is going to break 40,550. 40, I don't think market is going to break this no matter what. So what will I do? I'll go there. And in this case, I'll probably sell for the next week if I had to. 14,550. So I'll sell the 14,550 put. Now in this case, market has to move all the way to 14,550 and then further 50 points or 100 points actually, because that's the premium I'm collecting. So market has to move 500 points essentially for me to be able to start making any losses. So even though it's unlimited loss, I need a huge move against me to make a loss in this case. And so the premium that I'm collecting, it's essentially, this is a significantly better position if you are fine with capping your profits. So which is why selling options is usually meant as a, you are, when you're selling options, you are essentially aiming for some amount of, you are trying to be consistently making profit and stuff like that, which is why most option sellers essentially do it for living, a lot of them at least. So it, I mean, my odds are really, really good in this case. I have 83, uh, it's not calculating, but I'm sure over 80% probability I'm out of hundred out of hundred turns I'm I'll maybe lose in 20 and even though and even after that I'll need a move below 14,350 or something to be able to make a loss in this very unlikely so no, either way so this was the naked option buying and selling and now let's look at how much money you need for these. I forgot to cover this part. This is important. Just five minutes would be enough for this. So when I'm buying a call, how much money do I need? Whatever premium I'm paying for it. That's the amount of money I need for this. So in this case, I'm paying 171 into 12K. This is the exact fund and margin I need in my account to be able to take this trade. So buying options is cheap. I just need 12,000 rupees to be able to take this trade. Now, the converse way. Selling a put, that one is expensive. Why? This particular thing, I need, I need one, I essentially need 1.6 lakhs to be able to take this trade. And since I'm collecting 10,000, that's the amount of margin I need. So, why do I need so much more money to be able to take this trade? Anyone would like to answer this? To cover the losses, if happens. Exactly. So, when I'm, when I'm taking this particular position, when I'm selling the, it's essentially my broker who's doing it, right? I mean, he's taking the risk. 
So my broker needs some amount of money to cover his risk. And so does NSE, which is why I reserve 1.6 lakhs in my account to be able to. So essentially my broker, if my losses start piling up and they become huge, right? If they go significantly, if Nifty literally starts crashing all the way down, then my broker will be able to cover up from some of the losses. And if my, if my, if I'm not able to maintain this margin beyond a certain point, then the broker will automatically close this position and sell the particular put options at a loss or buy back at the loss since we are buying to close this particular trade. So, which is why selling options is very expensive because you need a lot of margin because your broker needs to reserve this amount of margin to cover your loss. So there's a huge difference. You just need 12K for the position and you need a 1.6 lakh for this position. That's some, um, I don't know, that's more than 10X. We can take this on margin though, right? Uh, yeah, you can take this on margin. Like I have some gold, I have some gold bonds pledged, which I use okay. for margin for selling options. So yeah, I mean, right. Piyas Sundar always mentions that he uses fixed deposit as margin, <laughs> as collateral. So yeah, there's something which came up. You, I mean, different brokers allow you to use the, he is a boomer, so he's probably using FT. <laughs> no offense, man. I know we have some boomers here, but they are not really <laughs> boomers. They are cool people, which is why they're here to begin with. And so, just so you know, some of the boomers on the call created the server. <laughs> Shiva is here. Oh, man. Abhay Saleh, I created the server. <laughs> you're, not a you're 27. You're 27. Gandu. I'm you're 27. Gandu. <laughs> you know all of this is getting recorded, right? <laughs> Dude, streamer mode is enabled. Stay safe, friend. What does this mean? Oh, it will not publish your name or your notifications on chat. Uh, okay. I'm. I'm not sure. Why is it giving me that particular? You have to enable it manually, actually. You probably in some time have done it. What should I do right now? What does yes, this say? It's fine, right? It's fine, right? Okay. It will protect like small thumbnails or videos that may pop up. It will disable those on the screen. Okay. No worries. Chalo. So these were the naked option positions. Now the next is spreads. So old time I asked, why would somebody in their right minds take a position which exposes them to unlimited loss? There are reasons for that, but it's not advisable. And another thing is you need a lot of margin for this particular thing. So most people won't be able to sell naked even if they want it. Because if you, you're just collecting 10,000 and you are essentially holding 1.6 lakh postage in your account, which just you cannot do anything with. So it is a fairly expensive trade. So what do you do if you are on a small account? And you want to sell options. What do you do in this case? So let me remove this. Let me build this particular thing manually. So I think FT won't go below 14,800. So I'll sell this option. Right? So that gives me this particular diagram. I'm selling this option. So my break even is 14699, but I need a lot of margin. I don't have it. So I think Nifty won't go below this particular point. But if it starts going, I want to protect myself. So I'll buy the 14,600 put option. So in this case, my risk is only from 14,800 to 14,200 into 75. That's my risk. So 200 into 75. That's 15K, right? So 15K is my maximum risk in this case. But I, I collected some 100, 101 rupees from selling this 14,800 put and I am paying, I'm paying 53 rupees to buy this particular 14,600 put. So the difference is what my particular premium is the premium I'm collecting. In that case, I was collecting the entire premium. I was collecting 7.5k because I was not paying anything, but my losses, I need to maintain a bigger margin. Now I have to buy this option and that will reduce my margin drastically. I only need 40,000 instead of 1.6 lakh. So I need one, uh, one fourth the amount of margin to be able to take this particular position. But then again, since I'm paying some premium, overall as a net, I'm collecting a little lesser premium. 
that make sense and wait how did the margin get reduced uh losses are so, capped yeah my losses are capped i cannot lose more than certain amount and Oh, okay. NSC so has this particular okay, yeah, own, NSC okay. essentially guides brokers on how much there's I think some formula which you can use okay. to calculate what's the margin needed and shit. They calculate your risk essentially. So basically against the sell you have a buy position so that yeah. uh, both will square it off. So that's why the margin is less. Your risk is less in this case. Yeah. So hence margin my is risk. less. Yeah, my risk is capped. And so in this case it's almost uh, half. Yeah. It has half, but the margin has reduced also quite a lot, right? So yeah. what exactly happened is my return actually went up. I'm actually collecting more amount of money for this. So in that case, I was paying 1.6 lakhs, 1.5 lakhs to collect uh, 7,500. That's 7,500 by 1 lakh 50,000. That's how much in 200. That's 5%. So that was the 5% return on my particular amount that I was collecting. And in this case, and in this case, I'm putting down 40K and I'm collecting 3.5K. So I'm actually making, some, I'm actually it's making 9%. some 8%, 9% yeah. profit in this, right? So now, okay. but what the problem is, if you notice something, that the amount of premium I collect is what protects me, right? This is my protection point. It helps me. It helps me to increase my break-even point, right? That's the cushion. That's my safety cushion. The amount of premium I'm collecting. Now, in this case, I have a hundred point premium. So beyond this particular point, fourteen thousand eight hundred, my premium. So it's hundred further points. I'm protected till there. Now, in this case, since I'm collecting lesser premium, right? This particular thing becomes essentially steeper. So fourteen thousand eight hundred. Now my break even is at 14752, not 14699. Why? Because I'm only collecting some 50 odd points. So it it has some advantages that it redu reduces the amount of margin you collect. But the disadvantage of this is that you have slightly worse break evens, essentially. But it does protect you from the unlimited loss thing. And if you look at the PNL diagram, so let's say, let's pick a random price, 14,700. The red line says you would be minus 4,000 on expiry, uh, not expiry, the blue line. You will be minus uh, 3,142 for this particular price point, 14,700. Actually, that's not the best example, but yeah, it works. So. Uh, for this particular hedge position at 14,700, if the market moves today, you will be minus 3,000 something, which is, which is bad, but it's okay. Right now, if you're just selling 14,800 and if market suddenly moves to 40,700, then you're losing minus 6,000. Look at this minus 6,000 on the day itself. So your losses, essentially, if the market starts moving against in a naked position, your losses will quickly pile up as compared to uh, a hedge position where the losses will slowly pile up. Like you will essentially have more time to get away. So the, what are the benefits? Margin goes down. Your percentage return increases. But what are the, what are the disadvantages of that? Uh, my break evens are significantly worse. If 50 points is a fair bit. From 14699, now my break even is slightly worse. Market needs to stay above this point for me to not lose money, right? My probability of profit because of the same reason goes down a little from 72%. My chances of winning are slightly reduced. These are some disadvantages, but the advan another advantage is that if the, if the market starts moving against you, then you have more time to cover the position, which you don't quite have the liberty in a naked position. Losses will quickly pile up they will just tank on you. So yeah, and nothing comes for free. There are a few pros, there are a few cons. Now you have to essentially decide which one makes sense for you, right? So this is first spread. This is when you're selling option. Now similarly, so when you, when you just buy a call, what's the biggest, what's the biggest problem you have in there? You're paying a lot of premium. 
and market needs to move for that much premium for you to be able to make profit right that's your biggest problem when buying options or uh, when buying calls in this example so you want you essentially don't want to pay. and also if the market does not move as you like if it moves against you you're going to lose a lot of money so what you can do is what you can do is you bought 14900 i believe the market is going to move 14900 i bought this particular call and then i look at the chart and i do some fibonacci shit and i'm like let's say market will go up but won't go up above 15150 at expiry it will not go above 15150 that's my assumption so what i will do is i bought 15000 uh, 14900 call and i'll sell 15150 call so what i have done is i paid this much premium and i collected some amount of premium to reduce my total cost uh instead of paying 12000 i'm only paying 8000 rupees to take this trade so now i need market to move lesser in my day note note the break evens right now i want nifty to go above 15071 to be able to make a profit from this when i sell a option which is further out then fun 5 i see some 60 point improvement in my direction and now my maximum losses are also reduced so you are essentially capping your maximum profit to increase your probabilities and your break even and to reduce your maximum loss so this is the opposite side of selling this is the buying so this particular thing is called a bull call spread you are bullish and you are using the call now the other side of this would be to sell a bear put spread you are bearish and you are using uh, sorry bull call spread so you are you are bearish on the market and you are selling calls to take the bearish position uh any questions man and you ones confused here with whatever i covered here i just covered two spreads i took the naked call buying naked call selling and i just covered them covered the max loss in them and converted them to a spread anyone has any questions yo guys am i audible i take that as a yes yes you <laughs> so i think we have covered naked options and spreads here we have covered the pros and cons of each uh another actually another call so when you were just buying a call right you needed a lot less margin but when you actually convert it to a spread a call spread your margin goes up i don't know what the exact reason for it because your risk is actually limited significantly you cannot lose more than 7k but for whatever reason your broker wants you to save 35k as margin so your margin actually goes up so your percentage profit can reduce that's a con so essentially anything that worked as a pro when selling options works as a con when buying options and vice versa it's basically the opposite trade so when you were selling all spread right if market moves quickly against you you will your losses will be your losses will slowly pile up which means you will have more time to get out of your position to cover your position conversely when you are buying a spread you are buying a spread so your losses will uh, your profit your profits will slowly build up if market moves to date itself you are not going anywhere near the maximum profit any time soon so you have to wait more so whatever worked as a profit as a as a pro when selling options essentially works as a con when buying options it's vice versa it's the opposite side of the trade if someone is selling other guys buy so i think we should end this at spreads i think we might as well just take another session tomorrow man it's close to 9 what do you guys say yeah, man i i think we should wrap up yeah so we yeah. essentially covered yeah. what options are uh we covered some of the greeks i think we'll go into that tomorrow it's not possible for me to be able to cover right now uh pay off diagrams we understood what this particular diagram looks like yeah. and what these particular things are we learned how do you open trades how do you close trades 
we learned the uh, the naked options buying put buying call selling put selling call and then we essentially learned how to reduce the amount of margin needed or to increase your probability of success by going with spreads when buying options or something so we have covered this much now what remains for tomorrow or maybe we can even come back in two hours if anybody but it's better to just take it tomorrow because it's getting late so now we have other strategies some neutral strategies some spreads more spreads there are a lot of things which you can do with options this is just taking a directional trades that we discussed so you can essentially take neutral positions you can just sell both call and put that gives you a neutral position as long as market stays in a range you make money. stuff like that and and then we have to discuss how the different greeks will re will will revisit these greeks now that we know some of the basics of these strategies and then we will see how these greeks affect the prices of options while we are in those in these strategies and then since someone asked to cover this i can cover how to trade options intraday and what are the things about these so let's keep this slightly advanced topics for tomorrow does that make sense yeah uh, uh, any yeah. let's go let's have some q and a any questions go on. question uh, sorry this Please. is basic but uh, what is the difference between futures and options sorry i don't know that so yeah no worries so futures is essentially a it's a basically a leverage position that's all it is if you can think about it for futures for futures essentially uh i feel that if i feel nifty is going down i'll sell a future and someone else will take the other side of this trade so it's basically it's it's similar to just taking a position on the underlying itself it's not very different from this so let me just add a future and i'll show it to you this is my strategy futures 25th pair buy so if i am essentially buying a future the red line and the blue line is the same as nifty moves up the price of the future there is no there is absolutely nothing it's basically just like buying a stock you know but the difference between the stock and the futures is uh, when you buy a stock the shares are built are, are created by the company right in case of futures someone has to take the opposite side of the trade like if i feel uh, nifty is going to go up and somebody has to feel that nifty has to go down so they will create the futures they will sell the future so what they will do is they'll do this they'll sell to open it's basically the same mechanism okay except it's a position one by one it moves exactly one by one to the nifty or underlying you're basically trading the spot in futures whereas in options you're trading the probability of the spot yeah i i like his definition because he has used this yes wonderful chat na abhi wo actually let's do that uh when you are trading futures you are trading the spot when you are trading options you are trading probability the pro of uh that option expiring in the money let's just say that of uh, futures move one by one to nifty so if you remember any of the greeks for the delta yes uh we remembered right for if nifty moves one point 15000 ce will move for it right in case of futures it's essentially one by one the one. delta of future is one theta is zero there's no time value there could be some amount of speculation on how far i mean there would be some premium on so most options uh, most futures do sell at a certain premium to the spot like this particular nifty is at 14924 there is some 20 points premium in this particular futures now one thing good about this is futures is it's a leverage position you have one you just need to pay 1.6 lakhs to take a position on what's essentially worth around 10 lakh 
so you can this is the only way to take a leverage position overnight in our markets uh, another funny thing another interesting thing is you can essentially replicate futures using options what you can do is you can buy us uh, you can just go to the add the money options and you can buy a call where is it yeah i'll buy a add the money call and i'll sell a add the money put and that essentially makes it the same position as futures why because call has 0.5 delta add the money call has plus 0.5 delta and add the money put has minus 0.5 delta so when i'm buying this plus 0.5 delta minus of minus 0.5 delta that essentially makes it one delta in technical terms this is called as synthetic futures yeah, this is a synthetic future so yes likes it a lot and i also like it a lot why the reason for this is because uh since the premiums are very less since i'm buying a lot less premium i need to the stt is very low on this for futures i think the stt is really high i have to pay some 250 300 per lot and for this i would only have to pay some 20 30 rupees per lot to take this particular position as the stt so it has some benefits and i i like i i actually use synthetic futures quite a lot why i use this is because i like the uh at times i like the probabilities of this i like the flexible why because i can just remove one leg and take the other position i can quickly switch i can just take the one side of it based on how i like so i use this a fair amount but i mostly use them just intraday i rarely take them overnight so yeah we can explore some of the futures tomorrow as well essentially the delta is 1 theta is 0 Uh, I'm not sure if that's how it calculates when you put that in, but let me see if it calculates any Greeks for futures. I'm not sure. It does. The so delta in this case is seventy five. The reason is it is selling slight premium. Ah, uh, theta is zero, dk is zero, vega is zero, gamma is zero. So yeah, it's basically just trading the spot. And as the guy mentioned, when you're buying call and when you're buying selling future uh, options. you are trading the probabilities right awesome any other questions um no questions then so just a general question the strategies that you have showed uh, is from sensible i can see right so uh, one yes. has to take a premium subscription to get the strategies or yes. uh, have yes. you taken for, like premium for hmm. this yeah i have i i pay for the premium okay. uh, it is decently priced i feel i mean for the amount of money it makes me but you can use opstra for this and a lot of people use opstra for this for these strategies so there's a strategy builder in this mm, and it okay. essentially does the same things for you so you can options uh, but it's just not very convenient from what i feel and it's also fairly slow but some folks really like it so it's a very opinionated thing and it will essentially do the same for you you just have to create a free account and one thing good with opstra is that these pnl diagrams are actually much better they are way better and these are more responsive and another thing is that you have these iv charts and stuff this is really 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 good with these guys now it's not working right now but their implied volatility charts are better than sensible even though i pay for sensible come to this particular site to look at some of the data so it's a it's a very good site especially if you don't want to pay and just want to start please go with opstra free of cost quite good and better diagrams they should just buy these diagrams when these diagrams are absolute shit look at where they adjust i have to keep adjusting them manually i never had these issues with opstra perfect it's almost perfect awesome so yeah that's all i had to discuss